your inspiration around classical music and, and your performing, um, where does that come from? I, it, it stems from the, the fact that I love a challenge and I, I, the, the music that, that I was introduced to for the first time. The first piece I, I had heard was a Bach piece. It was, Which one? It was, uh, the, it was called Sleepers Awake, it's the English translation, and I heard a solo version by Christopher Parkening. I, I heard it in my uh, get, just guitar appreciation class in, in high school, and I couldn't believe that it was one man creating the, those sounds, because the way the classical guitar works, it's multi-layered. One, uh, within one performance, you could play up to three different voices, and I was not used to that. The, traditionally, you know, you play, you, you know, a guitar solo, and then you play, you accompany that with chords. I mean, you need certainly need more than one musician to do this, and I really was just like enthralled by, it. just blown, got my hair got blown back by this performance because I was like, wow, this is one person uh, creating all of these layers. It was almost every time that I played it back. You could listen to a different voice, and you could tune into tune into uh, different things uh, with uh, with the piece, and and not only for the entire duration of the piece, just like you know, 20, 20 seconds of the piece was like so much to take in. I, I loved it. Why is classical guitar popular at this time? What's happening? Well, um, it's it just it just took a, it took a lot of time for it to get. It's it's mainly the education. Uh, aspect really? of it. Over over several decades, classical guitar became uh, just a staple, regular instrument in music schools, and, and now it's U.S. Even, internationally, uh, I w all over, but definitely, uh, definitely in the U.S. I've I've noticed this that uh, you know that that there I would say in the 1950s uh, there were uh, much much fewer opportunities to study the guitar uh, guitar in a mu in a music school uh, with uh, violin or cello or piano. Who or popularized it? They always credited Aaron Shearer, who was uh, an American pedagogue. Um, he formed the department at Peabody where I studied, and he formed the, the department at the uh, American University, um, and so forth. So that was that was something that's really, really, really key. Because once these graduates get out after after the first four or five years or so, uh, they're going to start looking for jobs, and then. Uh, new opportunities w will arise for a guitar department at another university or another smaller music school, and then um, after that, there's even more, uh, you know, skilled teachers and so forth. And now you can have uh, guitar being taught even as a part of the curriculum at school, at a, at a high school. You can have a classical guitar beginners uh, class at a high school. This is what is introducing it to kids. Uh, and I think it's what is uh, responsible uh, ultimately for this kind of uh, popularization of the instrument. So let's go back to what inspires you. You're a, a performer and you've been a competitor. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that world. The performing and competing are, are different for me. When, you, when, I, when I perform, uh, the what I, when I perform, there's a dialogue that I that I enter with uh, with my audience, and I just uh, you know want to share inner emotions with with the audience. And uh, based on each of the themes of the song. Yes. Yes. And you pull those together I as pulled, a yeah, and I carefully orchestrate a kind of program that would be that would be an interesting ride for some for someone. So to your parents to. talked about taking uh, people on a journey through their art and mm -hmm. opening up questions for them. So is that a similar storytelling? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You are you are telling a story, and they, the audience, will will uh, interpret it uh, how 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 they want. Your job, your That's job is to tell. That's what your father said. Right. He he stopped there. He says, yeah. "I'm not pushing an end result. I'm right opening up." Right. Did you learn that from them, or is that part of being creative? It's part. I think it's just part of being creative. Yes. Yes. Peter, what have you learned from the art world that you bring to your classical musical performing and competition? It's the it's the approach to getting uh, more successful, and then uh, defining that uh, defining what what success is for for you personally. Um, for my, uh, my parents, uh, I just I just always learn to make sure to always aim to uh, do the things that I truly want to do, and and those things are things that challenge me. I enjoy I enjoy to be to be constantly challenged, and I don't. 
you know, there, there's many things that you can do when you get out of school to make uh, quick money as a musician. You can, you can do you play. Think being yeah. a, um, an athlete helped you with that focus and that competitive edge yes. around music. Absolutely. So do I you see so. a contrast in Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, in many, uh, many aspects of, of music, like uh, the, you know, the, the competing and your 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 mental mindset or uh, just the work ethic, I still uh, take away from the from the time that, that I was an athlete. Um, absolutely. It, it, from from my parents, you know, uh, I, I just I just learned to always do the things that you truly truly enjoy and you feel feel good about. It. There's many ways that you can deviate from that and chase the dollar and do things. You know, a lot, a lot of people have to, unfortunately, when they get out of school. You know, nobody's a yo-yo ma when they get out of school anymore. It's very, it's a, that's very, very rare. Uh, you, mostly, you know, the people I'm talking about are skilled performers that uh, that need to learn how to make a living. But there's many ways that and you can choose. And how does one do that? You well, you can you can do it in a variety of ways. But the ways that the ways that I choose are teaching and giving my uh, giving my knowledge, passing it on. Uh, you know, creating a uh, new cla classical guitarist. I've, I sent one already uh, through a Peabody recently. Yeah, on the on the side of performing is to introduce and educate people uh, and and show them this different way of of playing the guitar. I'm always happy that when I do outreach at schools and and so forth, that every year that I do it. More and more people raise their hands when I ask that initial question of how many of you have actually heard the guitar being played this way? When, this way. Yes. Now, when I was when I was in school, when I was in school, there would be a show of uh, between zero and maybe two hands in the, in the audience. And now, I, you know, I, I look I look out and there there could be 20, 25, 30 uh, kids that have heard the classical guitar. That makes me that makes me happy. Be it makes me happy because even if they don't want to pursue it, they know that it's there. They know that it's available, and that's that's part of it. So why do you have to be an artist? I, I have to be an artist be because that is. Uh, it was the. It's my. It's my duty to do. To do it's that. Your duty. It's my duty. Absolutely. Wow. I don't. Uh, I. I wake up in the morning and I go to bed uh, thinking about how can I become a better artist so that I can influence more people. I can. Uh, I can help more young guitarists when I when I travel abroad. Those that don't have the, the same resources as 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 we do here. Uh, do you in the want United to create States. emotions in people? I do. I do. It's my it's it's my way. I'm not I'm not a very uh, outwardly um, emotional person. And when I when I walk walk on stage, it is it's just completely just opening up, and it's it's just wonderful. It, wonderful. Every aspect of it uh, is enjoyable. I you can you can enter in, into this dialogue with the audience, but also you you can influence people like my. So what's the dialogue? Yeah. So how do, how do you create that? I I create that that dialogue. With the with the way in which I uh, I approach different different aspects of the of the guitar, uh, the, the the guitar. The style. Well, the style. It could be anything. It could be the tempo. It could be the particular color. Uh, color it, means what? Color is the, the the choice of the timbre. Where on the string where on the string you choose to play. It, 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 just to simplify it, it's very very difficult to simplify, but it's more warm as you play towards the fingerboard, and it gets brighter and harsher as you move move to the bridge. Color, let's just use color as an example, is a is is a way to 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 incite certain emotions in people. You know, one one is more aggressive, another one is more uh, another one is more gentle, and just finding those those contrasts, people really really respond. To the color and the sound quality of the guitar first. Well, that's the, in the first couple of minutes. That's what they respond to. What is your intention, or what do you tell yourself right before you start? What creates your first spark? Now, as you're performing, as I'm performing, um, I I tell myself not to think so much, mm. because thinking uh, thinking in the woodshedding process of, of practicing and, and improving and getting better of course is, cru is crucial because you, you know, you're very clear you have a you have a plan but when you when you perform if you think too much you can't have uh, first of a all dialogue. you can't have a dialogue because a dialogue is more spontaneous that it's uh, you know, it's not mechanical to me maybe because uh, again I'm an introvert the dialogue is something extra it's something I don't count on 
you know, I'm very happy when people react to my paintings and, uh, you know, they have their own reaction. But it actually was not intended. To me, the intention is just to get it done, to get it out, you know, to make it. What happens with it next we never is know. Uh, irrelevant. Uh, so that's what is the difference between the uh, maybe the fine artist and the musician, because he has to have this contact Immediate. with you. Talk about how you see your future and how you've mapped that out or what's inspiring you as you move forward. I'd, you know, ma mapping it out is a difficult a difficult way of, uh, of th thinking about things. It's not, I wouldn't say it's mapped out. I'm aware of the things that, uh, the things that make me, the things that make me happy. Which are? Uh, to, to perform and share my music with as many people in as many different venues as possible. And everything that I do is, uh, is for that. Any recording that I make is, is, again, to allow me to play more concerts in more places all over the world. Any competition I do, again, it's to raise, raise my level, get me, get me, get, make sure my chops are, uh, you know, woodshedded to, to, to the highest level uh, so, that, so that I can share my music each year, each season at, at a higher and higher and higher level. I, I want to, that, that experience I told you earlier about the Christopher Parkening uh, record that I heard, yes. or my experience in listening to the, the albums of my professor at Peabody, Manuel Barueco, I would listen to those hours, uh, listen to those albums for hours and hours on end, nonstop. And it, it just took me, it took me to another place. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And that, that makes me happy.